Hey, my name's Jed. Uh, we're here at Kenner Chapel. We've tried to keep the church largely intact. We now have an antique store inside. Come on in, I'll yep. show you inside. We're standing out in front of the keystone of the church. The church was, as you can see, was erected in 1890 by the AMEC Church, and that's the African Methodist Episcopalian Church. So it was the former slaves from who many of escaped from the states, and they came up here and they bought this land around 1850, and finally in 1890 they erected this church, and it became. A real, uh, a real center for um, the arts. The music was world famous. Full disclosure, I always drive by this place, but I've never actually gone inside. And if, and if like a couple months ago, I thought, wouldn't this, like, wouldn't this place be great for local spotlight? Just because I think it's just so interesting. So many stories here. You never know what you're gonna get in terms of antiques. This is a, a, a French armoire, and um, this is called diamond point construction. And uh, the diamond point was used not exclusively, but it was a popular style in the 17th century. So this actually dates back to the 1600s. Wow, look um, at this, look how big this is. Yeah, it's pretty That's amazing. <laughs> and there's not a nail in it, and it's all pegged together. And even wow. if you look, like this is original. This door like just sits on iron pins. It weighs a lot, so it's oh. just popped off the hinge. Look at that. So, and then I won't put it back because it's gonna be a little and then oh yeah, check out the lock. <laughs> so the lock is uh, They don't make that like that anymore. <laughs> no. <do they? laughs> you can't get that you can't get that at IKEA. Uh, yeah, no, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's all uh, yeah, so that was and the lady actually she had it all restored in in France before she I had it shipped here, but it was, she moved into a smaller house and she didn't have room for it. Yeah, and I guess a lot of things here have that kind of like history in people's families, right? People bring in things and oh. they have a long history in someone's family. Yeah, it can be really emotional and you have to understand that. Mm -hmm. I've had people that I've gone to visit 20 years ago and they haven't been interested in selling an item because it was, and then for whatever reason, they've decided to sell it 20 years later and they yeah. call, call us back and say, yeah. you know, we've decided to sell. And, and it's just having an understanding that some of those things are, uh, there's there's emotional attachments and there's also the artistic attachment. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you are not gonna find this no. anywhere. No. You know, no one can do this work anymore yeah. and you can't get the woods and you don't have the the the, the you know the, the guys who can do the metal work and yeah. um, so uh, yeah it's pretty amazing like the kinds of things that you come across but this is an interesting piece and on this side it has this bigot and and this pops off so they would this would be much the same form that they would make as a tea urn but this one was for a southern drink and I don't even know what the drink is called <laughs> but it serves like a southern alcoholic drink. It was probably served by a butler because if you see the spigot is on the on the back side. So you would have so you have and you have the naked man there. Mm. <laughs> but you have a uh, so you have the the world and you have Hercules or um, Atlas, but I think this is Hercules. The interesting thing about this one is it's Gorham, which is an American silver manufacturer hmm. and Gorham did uh, they would do presidential pieces and they were a high-end American firm, sort of second to maybe Tiffany. I think this one's, uh, if I remember correctly, is around 1880. Okay. Uh, so it would be produced, so it, and it's sterling silver, so it's solid silver. Solid, yeah. um, Wow. But kind of a <laughs> cool thing. I'm curious, like, how did you get into the antique business in the first place? A friend of mine always says, and, and sort of laughingly, that it's because I'm unemployable for any other job. <laughs> 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 but in, in, in part, I was, uh, I do think that is in part true because I, I like the diversity that's in the antiques field. And uh, when I uh, graduated university in the early 90s, mm. um, I was doing entrepreneurial um, things. Uh, I was actually traveling a lot to Central and uh, Mexico and Central America and, and importing clothing and different handicrafts okay. and um, I was selling them at the outdoor market in Toronto, uh, the harbour front market and um, I thought it was the greatest thing because you could sell in a weekend, you could sell a few thousand dollars and it was a yeah. bit of work but it wasn't like working all week, yeah. you know, doing heavy labour yeah. uh, and then 
uh, the fashions that were sort of popular in that era that I was selling so well started going out of style and it became harder and harder to sell it. So I started incorporating because we were down uh, and there used to be a big antique market down at the, at the uh, harbor front there. Uh, uh, and uh, I started incorporating antiques in my, my stock and selling those and they began selling as well or better than the, the, the handicrafts. We started the store, I actually started in another location but I purchased the, the church in 2002. Hmm. And, uh, and then when COVID came, mm. uh, we were finding that people weren't coming into the store as much. And also there's a changing demographic. Whereas my parents' generation, they would go antiquing and they would love to go in the stores and browse about, pick up a few things here and there. The younger kids aren't doing that. So we've started going more to that, trying to appeal to that market with Instagram, and, and then we started uh, another division of the chapel here, which is Storia Auctions. And Storia is history in Italian. And it really kind of fit with what we're trying to do in the sense of like all of these objects have a history. And if you look, for example, at a spoon that has been used like it's 100 or so years old, it looks like a regular spoon, but if you look at it with a, a loop or a, a, a microscope, you'll see that there's millions of scratches on it, and that's from every person that's handled that object, right. has left an imprint on that object. And all of these things in here have been handled by other individuals. They, I don't believe necessarily like they're haunted, or, mm. but I do believe that, you know, that if I touch that, I've left a, my, my right. mark on yeah. that piece of, of furniture. And it carries with that the history of, of the people and the associations that it's had. So, so you know, Oakville is like a lot of like a Trafalgar sort of reference with Trafalgar yep. Road. And yep. So this is Nelson. This is the death of Nelson clock. So Nelson died in I think 1805. When Nelson died, uh, they they had um, these two brothers had a competition to see who could do the best depiction, like the best memorial to his death. And we think that this was probably an entry into that competition. It was the Boydell brothers who were very wealthy and they offered 500 pounds, which is probably about the equivalent of maybe $500,000 or hmm. something like that. Hmm. So there was a lot of entries, but this clock was a memorial to his death. And so there's Nelson, there's the ship uh, in, in battle and uh, there he is leading the troops on the door. And then there he is dying in his men's arms at the, wow. the base, so, yeah, kind of a... The other thing that's interesting, like, the, the clock is English. The, the settee there is Biedermeier, so it's Austrian or German. Uh, and then the, the, the angel is probably Italian. The, the corner cabinet is Dutch. <laughs> wow. And the, the, uh, the postmaster desk is Canadian. So it's a real mix. The bust of, uh, that's Shakespeare. The bust <laughs> of Shakespeare is, um, is English by a prominent English sculptor. Uh, really? Yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah, yeah so it's a, you get a real mix of things and that's, that appeals to, you know, like yeah. dealing with different things all the time. It, it, it broadens your spectrum of what you're looking at, but also, um, yeah. And you get totally different aesthetics with different countries. Oh, what is this? A Buddha, a Buddha painting. And so a lot of um, Buddhist monks or, you know, cloisters, they would do art in, in deference to. And, and so this would have all kinds of Chinese imagery, um, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, like, based on stories from antiquity. And, and hmm. uh, yeah, so one of the things I come across uh, are individuals who get overwhelmed often because uh, either they have too much, too many things, too many items, or um, uh, they, you know, they get in a situation where they have to have something done really quickly mm -hmm. and they end up throwing things out and not properly checking the value of the items. Yeah. And that's why I would always suggest that you get an expert in when you're not rushed because uh, too often people leave it to the last minute and then yeah. things happen or you know something like covid where mm -hmm. you know it makes it more difficult to have people in to look at things or mm -hmm. you know there's a, 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 and then 
if you can get a valuation on the items and then you can prioritize because what's really important is that uh, uh, I mean, a lot of people are really happy when I tell them their things aren't worth anything because then they go, oh, good, because I can get rid of right. it now, you know, or I can donate it or something. Uh, but then they know that the value isn't isn't uh, um, that high. Yeah. But and, and conversely, you know, I've had people who have been living with something and using it every day and they find out it's worth a lot of money and then they're like oh my god i can't produce that anymore yeah. because you know so uh, and then they might choose to sell it but at least they're making at that point an educated decision so maybe <laughs> like like if you had a poster from say uh, for example like toulouse Lautrec, like yeah. a moulin rouge or something like that they can be worth a, a, a upwards of twenty thousand dollars for a poster for a poster yeah, and for a while, like posters were selling for more than the original art. So you'd have the artwork for the poster, and the yeah. poster was actually worth more because it was printed by and it's it's evocative of a particular era. Uh, so even like uh, Art Deco travel posters, for example, like ski posters are really popular. Like these are the things that are really really sought after by collectors, and they will pay. Just stop and think because a lot of those things that were popular in uh, for children. Uh, th those those kids have grown up to be wealthy individuals who are now trying yeah. to buy back the things that they loved as, as a child and yeah. they're willing to pay now. So, what's this? It's a, 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 a secretaire. A secretaire? Okay. It's a secretary desk, which just means a secret desk. Yeah. Right. Like this. Uh, get a drawer out. So, this is uh, all hand dovetailed. So even like the interior drawer. And then they've used bird's, bird's eye maple. Uh, again, all hand dovetailed, oh. hand planed. Uh, so, uh, and the, the, the neat thing about how well this is constructed is, is speaks to, so this is 1820 and it works like you bought it, like it was made yesterday. Amazing. It goes in and out, it's, you know, it's Amazing. totally functional. And then you, you might get a few cracks and a few marks, but that's yeah. a 200 year old piece of furniture. This one I believe is federal from around 1820. Oh, yeah. So it's an American, uh, uh, and they would have been made, uh, a lot of the styles, uh, especially from the American, were uh, first uh, um, started in England. Hmm. So you get the American version of the English piece and, and uh, the English pieces are generally uh, more sophisticated because they had all like the more artisans it was mm. sort of the colonial power um, and then the American pieces or the Canadian pieces are always sort of the interpretation of the particular cabinet maker from that area mm. so you can have a, a very countryfied sort of version of the, of the English piece or you can have like a Boston or New York which which would have its own bent but it, it would be quite sophisticated but it would have certain characteristics that only those cabinet makers from that area would 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 follow interesting i'll just show you yeah. this is where we do our photography cool for our, for the items we auction and yep. and uh and then we uh number everything catalog it all and then sell it online yep. a bag of a bag of coins bag of coins. <laughs> bag of coins we might and these are all like mostly cooper nickel which means they're not silver uh, but we might have sell a bag of silver coins or also mint you get bills uh oh, wow. yeah these are uh yeah different uh, so you and then there's certain collectability here's some silver uh, silver bullion um coins so there's so many apps that wow. we use as, as an cool. augmentation as a way to sell things and and so you've really gone from uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know where you just have live auctions yeah to you know having a lot of different options with how you can sell these things so wow. it's it's good but it's also you have to kind of learn a lot of different uh, uh, platforms and, yeah. and ways of selling this was a, a not all everything here, but there was a, a, a friend of, of my niece's mm. had a, 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 a company like they they built um, real estate developments. Okay. So they had an office in Toronto and this was all the contents of the office. 
uh, that they had. So like these were out of the Eglinton Theater from like Art Deco period. Oh, cool. So they're like Art Deco consoles. And then um, oh wow, yeah. Some of this was the office, like the, the, uh, the art that they had in the office. Look at yeah. the old film reels. Yeah, those oh, were from wow. the theater as well. Like we put those on because they were. Oh, I'll show you the theater. Oh yeah, that's the theater. Just want to say thanks, Jed, for your time. Oh, really thank appreciate you, Paul. it. Was, uh, it was fun. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. So if you got something, make sure you contact Jed. <laughs> thank you. So we've tried to keep the church largely intact uh, uh, because it's such an important historical monument. And that's why we kept the name. So the Turner Chapel, so Bishop Henry McNeil Turner was an important figure. He was a minister under Abraham Lincoln in the Civil War. And he was an important figure in the black uh, African-American culture. And so this is the church that was, was made in his name. And uh, we've tried to be sensitive to the history of, of, that, of that person.